if we can't agree to a trade relationship, Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK, to a lesser extent, stays inside a kind of EU light arrangement until there's a deal. Trade continues to flow as now, which means there is no need for a border in Northern Ireland. Brexiteers loathe this, saying it keeps us as a kind of vassal state inside the EU. But if it goes, Britain is committed to finding another way to avoiding a hard border in Ireland. Simon Coveney is the Foreign Minister and Tornister, or Deputy Prime Minister, of the Irish Republic. And he's with me now. Simon Coveney, welcome. Thank you for having me, Alan. Can I ask you, first of all, um, whether you are prepared to shift at all on this very vexed question of the backstop? Well, I mean, the straight answer to that is that the backstop is already a compromise. It's a series of compromises uh, that it was designed around British red lines. So, I mean, don't forget, mm. initially, uh, it was an agreement between the EU and the UK that there was a need for a fallback or an insurance mechanism to reassure sure. people in Northern Ireland. When the EU then designed what became known as the backstop on the back of that political commitment more than a year ago, uh, the British Prime Minister said she didn't like it uh, and she needed it changed. Uh, and so it was redesigned. Uh, it was Britain who actually asked that the backstop would be UK-wide on customs sure. in terms of creating this concept of a single customs territory. It was but, the UK that insisted on a review mechanisms for the backstop so that it could be changed okay. or removed if everybody agreed to that. And we have the very need for the backstop in the yeah. first place was because of British red lines that they wanted to okay. leave the customs union and single market as well as the European but, Union. So the but, Irish position but. is, look, we have already agreed to a series of compromises here uh, and that has resulted in uh, what is proposed in the withdrawal agreement and Ireland uh, has the same position as the European Union now I think when we say that uh, the backstop as part of a withdrawal agreement okay. is part of a balanced package that isn't going to change. It's not going to change but it, ha it is now dead I mean, the, back, the withdrawal agreement with the backstop was defeated by 230 votes. Government went down to a historic defeat in the House of Commons. That withdrawal agreement, no, as it is, is dead. No, Andrew, that's not true. Uh, what was defeated in the House of Commons uh, was a refusal to, uh, to ratify a package which involved a withdrawal agreement, which, yes, includes the backstop, but Critically also a future but... relationship declaration. Uh, and so it's the balance of the two of those things that I think we need to be looking at now. You know, if you look at the withdrawal agreement, it's actually not that controversial. It's about protecting citizens' rights, British Ooh. citizens across the EU. It's about a financial settlement. It's about but, creating the time and space for a transition period for politicians and businesses to prepare for new realities. And it's about protecting a peace process, which I believe the Prime Minister is deeply committed to. And even three weeks ago on your show, uh, she made it very clear why there was a need for a backstop because we can't talk about not wanting border infrastructure without actually providing the practicalities that make that real. And that's what the backstop is about. The problem uh, with arguing against the backstop okay. is that nobody yet who argues against that insurance mechanism, which may, by the way, never be used if the future relationship is comprehensive enough to avoid it. Uh, but the problem with the argument is that nobody has come up uh, with a pragmatic, sensible and legally sound way of avoiding border infrastructure re-emerging between the two jurisdictions on the island of Ireland. Well, uh, and that is why it took two years to get the backstop agreed. And that is why I believe the Prime Minister is correct when she defends it. Well, you say that, but let me read you what one M Michel Barnier said uh, this week. He said, if there's no deal, we will have to find an operational way of carrying out checks and controls without putting back in place a border. My team have worked hard to study how controls can be made paperless or decentralised. There is an answer to the question about avoiding the Irish border by the EU itself. If that is true, there is no need for the backstop, surely. Well, it's, that isn't actually well, what, what Michel Barnier Bar was saying. I read his very words. Yes, what Michel Barnier, yeah, what Michel Barnier was saying there is if we don't have a backstop, then the EU, Ireland and the UK uh, will have to work together to try and avoid border infrastructure. But that will not be easy. But he said uh, it can there be is done. No magic, there is no magic solution here. Uh, uh, for this problem. If there was, it would have emerged by now. Uh, and that is why uh, Ireland will insist on the United Kingdom keeping its word 
both to Ireland and to the EU and to people in Northern Ireland in terms of protecting okay. a fragile but hugely valuable peace process. Don't forget, so, Brexit is not an Irish um, policy. This is, these that. are we decisions that. that are being taken by the UK that are causing huge problems on our island, I understand north and that. south. But we are and there is an obligation on people to actually have pragmatic solutions here rather than wishful thinking in I, relation to border I understand that, but we are where we are. To be absolutely crystal clear, if the House of Commons votes next week to remove the withdrawal, the backstop from the withdrawal agreement and to find alternative arrangements, your reaction will be that the withdrawal agreement is in effect holy text and cannot be touched. Well, I mean, that is like saying uh, to Ireland uh, that uh, we are not now going to follow through on our commitments uh, to a negotiated and sensible way forward to prevent border infrastructure re-emerging like, in any circumstances sorry, as an insurance mechanism. No, no, just let me finish, Andrew. And we're going to replace it with an aspirational hope uh, and a commitment that somehow we'll solve this, but we don't know how. Uh, is it reasonable to ask people north and south on the island of Ireland uh, to actually move ahead on that basis? I don't think it is, and I don't believe the EU will support that approach at all. And therefore, again, to be clear, you don't think the EU or the Irish government would accept uh, a British escape clause from the backstop or a time limit to the backstop? Well, there, are, there is already a review mechanism for the backstop, that, that if there are sensible ways uh, of providing the same solutions that the backstop provides, if it's ever triggered, um, it's not unilateral. Uh, then... Then, no, but there are mechanisms. And, you know, people keep talking about games of chicken here and mm. uh, the, the, the UK on. position being against the Irish or the EU position. We're all trying to work together here. Britain and Ireland are two islands next door to each other. Uh, we have an extraordinary history together, at times a very tragic history. But we have to work out these things together and stop talking about games of chicken. We've had two and a half years of negotiation. We have a withdrawal agreement. We have a future relationship declaration. So, there are ways of resolving these issues, in my view, by, by, by changing the aspirations within the future relationship declaration, which, in my view, will reassure people that the backstop is never likely to be used. So, that is so the you, way in which, okay. which I hope these negotiations will go, rather than the British Parliament deciding on something that may command a majority in Westminster, but has no chance uh, of getting uh, uh, agreement or ratification uh, in the European Union. I mean, listen to what okay. people are saying in Europe. This isn't just about Britain's future. It's about our future together, the UK and the EU, separate, but at the same time working together in our uh, combined interest. Uh, the European that, Parliament yeah. will not okay. ratify a withdrawal agreement that doesn't have a backstop in it. It's as simple as that. And as I understand it, you're ruling out an extension, a, a time limit to the backstop and a unilateral British escape clause to the backstop. So th I'm running through the various options people here have talked about. Another one is an I a separate individual treaty between the Republic of Ireland and the UK to resolve the Irish border issue. What about that? But Andrew, with respect, you're talking about this as if we're starting the negotiation again. Well, we we've had where two we are years now. That's of negotiation. The all of these, all no, sorry, all of these issues were debated and discussed and argued when actually we were putting a withdrawal agreement on an Irish protocol to that withdrawal agreement together. These issues we teased through them in great detail, and your prime minister signed up to the backstop as a compromise, which was designed around her and Britain's red lines. Okay. And now you're saying, well, actually, you know, I'm asking um, you whether there's we'll, extra accept, wiggle we'll accept a withdrawal agreement as long as we yeah. take out uh, the compromises that Britain was willing yeah. to make, you, but you, not the compromises that the EU was willing to make. That a is a wholly unreasonable position. A few moments ago, you mentioned quite rightly the question of the hard Irish border. Uh, we are now all heading towards a no deal exit, it seems. In those circumstances, your own Prime Minister said that if things go wrong with the no dealing, the border could look like it did 20 years ago, involving customs posts, people in uniforms, cameras, possibly a police presence or an army presence to back it up. Can I ask you what uniform that army would be wearing? Look, what my um, Taoiseach uh, uh, and, uh, and Prime Minister, as many people in, in Britain will understand it, said was he was asked to describe what a hard border looks like. Uh, and he described it to remind people what things were like 20 years ago. 
we cannot and should not be proposing going back there again. Uh, and so what I would ask people to think about is how far we've come in the last 20 years. What a peace agreement be called the Good Friday Agreement or the Belfast Agreement or the 1998 Agreement, yeah. whatever perspective you come from, what that has done for relationships between our two islands. Let's not go backwards okay. now it, and it, cause it, tension. And let's listen. No, this what? is really important because this doesn't happen enough, in my view, on the British media. Let's not listen just to one political party's voice from Northern Ireland because they happen to sit in Westminster. Let's listen to what everybody in Northern Ireland is saying, what business people are saying, what farmers are saying, whether they're unionist okay. or nationalist. That's a very fair There point. is a strong view coming from Northern Ireland which says, look, we have a withdrawal agreement here that protects the peace process and good relations on the island of Ireland. That's, Let's okay. take that okay, that's rather a, than risk a no-deal Brexit. That's a very fair point, but in these very, very serious circumstances, if Parliament votes for an extension to Article 50 and comes to Ireland saying, will you back an extension to Article 50, in these circumstances, in a word, yes or no? Oh, yes. I mean, Ireland won't right, be an obstacle uh, to more time if that's needed. Look, I mean, Ireland wants Cornish to help in this Cody, process, thank you very, I, I understand uh, that. So we're we're out of time. Thank you.